Hey Legionnaires, welcome back. We're here with another Dawnless Day Siege Fruit Day. And we're starting this one off with a glorious sally out here. We have Moro and Harad both sallying out here against Gondor. And they are taking no prisoners. We have Mummox, we have cavalry, we have infantry, everything sallying out here that you could ask for. And they're going straight in for Gondor. You can see here the uh, serpent, serpents of the eye already going in. And uh, I think we're going to have the serpent guards to the same very shortly as well. And uh, yeah, it is a chaotic battle. This is a very, very cool, close battle that we did recently in a stream. If you haven't uh, checked out the stream, you can see the battle now. And you can see the chaos that takes place. But yeah, we have two Mordor armies, two Harad armies against four Gondor armies. So yeah, Gondor attacking uh, Merlond here. And we have the uh, forces of evil defending as we have the Sun's Day already clashing there with uh, Gondor archers and some Pelagir marines. We've got Faramir over here with his Athelian rangers pr praying that he's going to survive this sally out. We've got a charge there from the Harajim lances into Pelagir marines. Really good charge into them. And uh, yeah, we're going to see another charge from Sums of the Eye going in. And there are some huge kills in this one for um, both sides. Both sides getting some absolute massive kills with some of their units. So yeah, definitely worth getting some snacks, getting some drinks, and getting ready for a glorious siege battle. As the Serpent Guards here, uh, Serpent Guards get off the uh, the Gondor Sword and off their, off their towers. You can see Horse Archers is focusing down the Fountain Guards. Not a bad idea, actually. Not a bad tactic. Trying to weaken them like that. We've got Faramir is now being engaged, and the Mummocks are going in. And they are trying to rampage through Faramir's ranks. And he... Faramir, you know, he's got experience with the Mummocks, but I don't think he's expecting to be that close to them. We've got more Mummocks over here, fighting up against Gondor infantry. Got the Corsair uh, Marines here as well with their Javis. They're trying to do some work. I think they're uh, trying to support their attacks from there. And there you go, a general has been killed. Faramir has been killed. He's got 20 men left. The Mummocks are responsible for his death. And as you can see, more Marines uh, being engaged. Got the uh, Gondor Swords here. They should have easy deal with these Marines if they don't get any support, but the Mummocks and the uh, Cal, I'm sure, are going to be sniffing in and trying to go for kills where they can. Again, more charges here from the uh, Mummocks going in, trying to silence these uh, archers. They're just rip ripping through. I mean, they are more than welcome to pull through. They're huge elephant so uh yeah these guys can just rip on through i mean these are the baby moments i can't wait until we get the actual mama kill there you go through these guys go destroying all of these uh he's got no units here and i'm pretty sure he just gives a, mo a movement attack not an order like a uh an order like to attack some an attack order because that's that way you just like pass through units the Gondor Sword Militia here, they're also getting trampled by uh, the Mamuks. Servants of the Eye still getting the Silver Chevron here. Rousing what they can. Yeah, Mamuks over here just killing more and more of these uh, Gondorians off, off supporting their uh, their allies here. On the other side, it looks like Gondor is just about to start landing. Nothing else is really taking place. The uh, other Gondor players have actually, uh, like moved away from this area to try and avoid, I guess, getting side on themselves because I don't think a single defending unit has been lost. We might be able to lose some of the Haradrim Lancers here. Yep, there you go. Some of them have been uh, destroyed. But apart from that, everything else is pretty much intact. Gondor Swords. Still getting knocked about here by the Mummocks. Yeah, they stand no chance. But yes, if you're enjoying the Dawnless Days action and want to see some more glorious sallyouts like that, and do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support, guys. Everyone does help out the channel. And if you want to send any of your Dawn's Days replays in, feel free to uh, send them in to my Discord. The link is down below in the description. But yeah, what a battle to end the the, uh, the year on. It is a glorious, glorious battle. And it's already started off so well. It really has. Gondor Swords here. They're starting to lose decisively at 95 men, the wavering. Because they've lost their general Faramir. I think we actually have all of the unique generals for Gondor here. Faramir was here. Uh, RIP to him. And um, we also have uh, over here Boromir with his Oskiliath veterans. He's moving across. He's abandoning his father. 
We've got uh, Prince Imrahil here with the Swan Knights. And then we have uh, over here, we have Denethor, uh, Stuart Denethor the second, the Citadel Guard bodyguard. Looking at very happy is ready to eat some tomatoes, but they've opened up a breach of, uh, of Gondor. So I don't know if they're going to bother to land more troops or whether they're just going to go through the breach. But Mordor and uh, Harad are not defending the entire city. They've made a line of defense here, sort of in line with this ramp. Uh, so they'll defend this sort of sector of the city. They're going to give up the rest. Of course, they will defend uh, this great mausoleum or whatever it is that's uh, like this great... I don't know what it's really supposed to be. Hill, as is in Merlond. I feel like there should be some sort of thing on the top of it. Um, but yeah, it is uh, going to be a strong, strong uh, defense now for uh, Mordor and for Harad because they've destroyed an entire army pretty much. It's now turned into a 4v3. In fairness, one of the armies is just pretty much a full Cav and a Mummock army. Um, while, uh, so they are kind of already down an army in that sense. But it's still looking pretty good. Like, balance power... It's still pretty in favor of the uh, of the attackers. Um, well, actually, sorry, the defenders, sorry. Um, only just. Only just. And that's pr pretty much just because of the mummocks. Uh, they really swing the balance power in favor of uh, the side that has them. Morgul uh, raiders appear. They're fighting against the Gondol swords. You kind of expect these guys to win. You can tell from the armor difference. Gondor definitely has the advantage. And it's also surrounding them, I think, as well. Uh, I think they destroyed the gates. Oh, they destroyed the gates over here. Okay. I thought maybe they destroyed the gates here. I was going to say, that would be a bit pointless because Morgul Legion and Orc Warriors are defending the bottoms of it. Uh, we actually have got Morgul Raids winning this fight, apparently. I don't know why. This Gondor Sword is losing. Um, yeah, okay. Interesting. Maybe just the attack order wasn't given? I don't know. Or maybe they're trying to pull out of combat. They didn't want to actually engage the small Raiders, but they are uh, not having a great time there. But yeah, as you can see, the horse archers now are arriving for Harad. They're trying to uh, prepare to, I guess, besiege almost Gondor here, because Gondor's formed its own sort of wall of infantry here. We've got Ringo Vale men at arms. We've got Penneth Glen spears, Gondor spears. So we've got a whole host of units to defend. The archers, I think, are trying to get onto the wall. Um, I think these, well, these Athelian rangers. And they're going to get focused down. I mean, the three ranges are pretty good, but uh, they are obviously very vulnerable to uh, archer fire. So the uh, horse archers there might have a lot of joy taking them out. They have already got off the walls of uh, Gondor. They managed to get some units off. What are they engaging? Orc warriors. I'm just not used to the new, uh, like, Gondor. Sorry, not Gondor. Mordor looks. I have to even look to see what an Orc Warrior looks like, what the unit is. Because these Orc Warriors look so different to the old ones. And they look so much better. But yeah, the Pelagirs are losing. They haven't been able to get their Javis off. Maybe they should have stayed up there for a moment and just throw their Javis down. As the Gondor Swords fought in this fight here. Also, it doesn't help that I think, yeah, you can see the Corsair Archers firing into the flank of the Pelagir Marines. They're doing some serious damage. We're going to see Helmut of Lambden go up onto the wall as well. Uh, never really often see them being brought. I imagine they might have been just for, I don't know, pushing towers or stuff like that. They didn't expect them to do too much in the way of work. But a lot of Pelagian Marines are arriving uh, and being used in today's battle. I think everyone just because brought them because uh, everyone loves a bit of a Javi abuse. They do look awesome though. They do really look good. But uh, yeah, they are... I mean, there'd be a good counter for the Mummocks if they can get them in against them. Uh, we do have nice Silver Swan trying to scare off the Cav here. It's not a bad idea. Try and keep it at bay. But the Mummocks are slowly lumbering up as well to get ready for another fight. We'll see whether they uh, get sent in again outside the walls. They might have to come back inside the walls um, and actually support here because though there's a decent amount of reserves. Uh, the quality of infantry is definitely in favor of Gondor. I mean, the Gondor is going to struggle to get through all these Adun and Kori down here that are waiting. And we have Umbai Usurpers here. So they've got some good units that are waiting. And what else we've got here? Desert, uh, Serpent Spears. Also ready and waiting. I mean, they could just use the uh, Serpent Spears, hold the line there, put some archers, just fire into the choke point. If that uh, comes to happen, that'd be what I'd be doing. But uh, it looks like, yeah, we've got Gondor Sword Infantry pushing forward here. And the first battle in the streets might be about to take place. Your 
Morgul Orcs really don't know where they're going. On by surface, look like they're going to push forward. You might see the support of a Dune and a Cory as well as going in as well. So that's going to be a tough fight there. But there you go. We've had a attack outside the walls again. The Mummocks have gone in. So the eye helping to uh, mop them up. And you can see, look at this. The Gondorians are running for their lives. Run, run, run. The Mummocks are coming. Sorry, seeks tower there you go yeah they kind of you knew what was going to happen these ringlow veil weren't going to just stand their ground they've already lost 60 men in that initial charge incredible this silver chevron at baby mama kill this is insane i don't think any of the mummocks had any chevrons um yeah well i think they've all earned a couple that's for sure you can see the uh, serpent guards just running in behind mopping up these ringlow veil the nice one two from the cavalry and the uh, and the elephants And there you go. I think that's a pretty much a very dead Ringlow Veil vale there. Uh, but again, the uh, Gondorians now tightening their circle. They look like they're going to get the trebuchet inside, which also, by the way, this is a thing that now happens in the new uh, update. Trebuchets now move. They're on logs. and just get pushed along with their logs. Cool idea. I do like it. It does make the trebuchets a bit more useful. Um, but yeah, so and also makes means you can use them into latest parts of the game, so they don't have to just rely on that insane range uh, to be used. But yeah, so the trebuchet is getting pushed inside to be nice and safe. It's pretty much using none of its ammo, like a fifth maybe, knock down that wall. And it looks like we're going to see the first sort of a, like infantry fights as well taking place. It looks like we've already got Warriors of Lost Ark losing there to Serpent Spears, and uh, the same is going on over here as we have Adun Macquarie fighting off against. The, uh, the Gondor Swords here, with the support of Umbai Serpents, so Numenorians battling Numenorians. The Bally on there, I think the Orcs are already uh, getting engaged as well, they're starting to get a taste of man flesh. Over here, got the Morgul Orcs, which are a uh, cap unit to three. They're a little bit better than Orc Warriors. I think, uh, ever so slightly, I think. Certainly cool to bring. They're battling on here, doing their best. We've got pole arms coming forward as well. Morgul Legion now coming in. They've had a bit of a rework in luck as well. Someone described them as looking like juggernauts in the stream. Uh, let's have a look at the one that's in reserve. Uh, just to get a better idea. I mean, they do look pretty... I think they look pretty similar, to be honest, to what they looked like originally. But they do look very cool. I think they, they, um, like they got like their shoulder pads are, like a little bit different, I think. They just they do look yes. fairly similar to me. They look, like they want to they look awesome, though. They do look very, very cool. I'll give them that. Um, but yeah, the pole arms engaged over here will certainly give the, uh, the Gondorians a disadvantage and they're already losing. The enemy have rallied their units. Yeah, Gondorian sword infantry, they will probably lose that fight. We've got the Warriors Loznak already wavering breaking there. We've got an aggressive assault now from the uh, from the orcs here as they're taking on the Gondorian swords they're trying to flank on around with the Umbai usurps as well and uh, yeah there's wall fight over here I mean Gondor just didn't get off the walls they've been absolutely murdered by the orcs the orcs and the evil men of Umbar well Harad but also slash Umbar they are Corsairs after all yeah, now look at this. It's like a siege almost in itself. We've got Mummock's Cav out here waiting patiently. All uh, waiting for like an opportunity to go through that breach and attack Gondor. They even get the chances also the, uh, the gates over here. I, mean, I don't know why they're bothering to defend them. They hold the gates. I guess they have to destroy them. Uh, and there is... It says with oil, but I'm pretty sure there is no oil on most of the maps in Dawnless Days. Yeah, pole arms over here. They're starting to win their fight. They are getting focused down though.
The three arrows coming in, doing as much work as they can. Keep the banner high, boys. Keep that Morgul banner high. See in the distance over there. Gondorians that keep coming forward. They want to take their city back. I guess Merlon must be a city of Gondor. Looks very Gondorian. Yeah, there you go. Both on Dorian units losing there. We're going to have to see more troops come forward. It looks like Pelagia Marines are going to get some form. Maybe more Gondorian swords. Yeah. Same sort of outcome over here as well. More Galorks taking over. Helping to, helping to kill off the, uh, the Gondorian swords here. Kings of man flesh. There you go. They routed them. Our Pelagia Marines are behind. They might want to be careful about their javies. Yeah, balance power is way in favor of the uh, defenders at the moment. But again, that is because of the Mummocks. It's 8,000 against 5,000. And the Mummocks are out of the game now. They're all outside the city, just standing there doing nothing. Penithgill and Spears aren't going to be the ones to break through, that's for sure. Got Morgul Legion fighting off here as well. They're doing their bit. But yeah, as you can see, all this Cav and all these, uh, these Mummocks are just outside the city, not doing anything. They're, they're not coming back inside either. Um, so it's just down to the infantry, really, to, to hold on. I mean, they are, the Horse Archers are doing a bit. They're just firing to the backs of Penith, uh, Pelagia Marines and uh, shooting the Archers as well. So they're being a bit of a pest. They are going to run, run out of ammo eventually. And these Horse Archers need to be careful. They don't want to be in. Uh, don't want to go into yet. Yeah, go into melee, and they have. They have. I don't think they meant to, but I don't know. That was a definitely. Uh, I think a, a misclick. Pathfinding. I think might have had a, a few things to play with that one. And uh, we've got more swords getting ready to come forward here. Pelican Marines. That the uh, pole arms are being forced back, being peppered by uh, by archers. It looks like yeah. It looks like the Morgul orcs will hold on, but I don't think they'll hold on for another wave. The archers is all getting uh, sent forward for Gondor and are doing some absolute work right now. You can see here, a lot of Gondor archers. They've got a great view of the city. Fire down onto any orcs they fancy. Focus them down, boys. And there's some uh, orc bow rabble coming forward here. They're firing onto these uh, these Gondorians up here on the uh, on this little tower. Cool little uh, sort of like outpost that you have. I do quite like it. There you go, Gondor goes in again for a second wave. We're going to break these more glorks pretty quickly. Yeah, it looks like there you go. More Glorks can get broken through. There's more troops coming forward. Urg Throng being sent in next. And if they can get uh, if they can get up here and support their uh, their more Glork boys, then they'll be all right. Seeing more archers being sent over. The men are broken and running for their lives. And it looks like at the moment, looks like they're holding pretty well. Actually, looks like there's a bit of a push going on here. From uh, from the defenders, they kind of like push forward with even more troops. Look at this, they're doing the quarry being thrown in. They're really trying to break through this. If they can, so they are beating a lot of the stuff here. The Pelagian Marines and Gondor swords after that might not be enough to stop this push. The Pelagian uh, spears are breaking. Yeah, look at that. With the support of the archers here, they're getting some incredible kills right now. Uruk uh, archers, you know, 
firing to the flanks. It's still sort of a bit of a side shot there. I think the Penetkill and Spears are retreating because they are trying to reform the line here. They don't get maybe shot in the side so much. I really don't know what the uh, the plan is, but they're, they're trying something. I think the horse archers are going back um, to supply barrels, I think, to get more ammo. I really have no idea. There's also a Corsair Marine over here that's, I think, resupplying as well. So yeah, uh, Harad really trying to make sure they use all their ammo if possible. Here we go, artillery coming in as well. Fire arrow, uh, ammo going in. And they are trying to hit the uh, the orcs out here. They got a decent hit there. Burning a lot of these uh, bow rabble. Bow rabble lives don't matter anyway, so this is fine. They're getting messed up as they retreat. They're getting outgunned by the archers. Heligay Marines and Gondor Swords fighting shoulder to shoulder against the armies of evil. Look at this guy over here, this poor orc. He's getting like 3v1. Can he take any of them down with him? Can he take any Gondorians before he clearly goes to orc heaven? Uh, I don't know. It's the same animation. It's quite funny. Oh, jeez. He nearly got hit. Oh, and then he goes, he goes down. He nearly got hit by an artillery piece. Oh, someone else did, though. Some poor Gondorian got friendly fired. Oh, it's a 4v1. Look at these Gondorians. Not playing fair at all. Not playing fair at all. There you go. Looks like the pole arms here are also the Morgul Legion getting focused down. Out of 10 men, they still haven't broken six and they're not breaking. Jeez. Maybe a little bit over overextended here. It's starting to see uh, Serpent Spear start to waver and break. But also, some of these Gondor swords are kind of getting isolated and, uh, behind enemy lines. On by usurpers, they're fighting with the uh, pentacle and spears. Looks like the uh, the spears and, uh, pulling out of combat to reform up. They're losing a lot of men. This is always a risky thing to do. You lose a lot of troops by just maneuvering while in combat. Keep fighting on. Men of Pinneth kill him. I don't know if these guys are still getting a rework. I did remember someone saying that the uh, the five units were going to get a rework. Whether the Penithkillin ones and Ringo Bale will, I don't know. Might be way down the pecking order of sort of like things to do. We've got Founding Guard now in here. Those nasty halberds coming forward. Now would be the time to use whatever ammo you have left, which is they are just literally running out as I speak. Uruk archers here, they're firing into those uh, founding guard. They are killing a couple of them, down down six troops, but it's not a lot, really. Oh, we've now got a uh, shock coming forward as well on this flank here. They're starting to get a little desperate. The shock is just going to take a, just get focused down by ar arrows, really, from the uh, Gondor archers on that tower. Yeah, those, uh, those archers up there, they're nearly out of ammo, but all it takes is just to replace it with another one, and it's back on that very nice elevated position. And yeah, I mean, the the uh, Morgul Raiders are winning, but now we have uh, Warriors of Lost not coming in. They're going to try to even up the uh, the playing field. Artillery coming in as well, kind of clips the back of this uh, Uruk throng unit. I think it got one poor Uruk. Not really enough to make much damage or do much damage. They're very inaccurate, the uh, trebuchets today, it seems. Very inaccurate. We've got Uruk bodyguards now in here. They're actually routing 
Pelagian Marines, they probably will get these Wars of Laws knocked too. Just seeing these guys in action. I think we have uh, two Othrods in today's battle as well, actually. And we have um, the unique um, Adun Nakori General. Here he is. Um, our Bel uh, Belzagar. He is here. There he is. Looking glorious. I do like his, uh, his armor. It's very cool. Very unique. Um, but yeah, we do have then uh, one uh, Othrod there. And I think the other one... Yeah, he's forming up over here. So we have two Othrods in action here today. It doesn't look too good for the uh, for the Orcs over here. You can see the uh, Uruk Throng is starting to waver and break. We've got some Corsair Marines and some uh, tiny little Uruk Throng units. They're going over there to try and support. But it's starting to look a little thin on the ground here of the uh, Force of Evil. Gondor is still pushing through. Like, even though they're down an army... They're not giving up without a fight. And you know what? They have a good chance that they can win this uh, street fight on this flank here. Certainly with the support of those Founding Guard and the Archers. Yeah, they're doing a really good job right now. All Raiders going in. I think they're trying to hit the side of those uh, Founding Guard. They sort of did a little bit. Hit the side of them there. Uh, Unit's so big that they've also hit the front of them. And they're bouncing out of that combat, going in for another one here. Keep battling away, men of Gondor. These Morgul filth will be rid. We'll be rid of them soon. Yeah, they're actually yard dying pretty quickly, the Morgul Raiders. That was a fresh unit not too long ago. They've already lost about 60 men. 60 orcs. We've got uh, Uruk bodyguards coming forward now. The elite um, Mordor infantry is only capped at one, unless you bring Othrod as well, so you can bring two. Um, so it's kind of always the place to go for. So bring this. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot, a lot less of the Witch King and more the of Othrod being bought. bought but I, uh, I could be wrong there. We'll see. Elegant Marines sneaking on through it, and there is a sneaky gap there. They pulled through maybe like two bodyguard, but that would be it. Look at this guy. Slice and dice there by the Euro bodyguard. Yeah, these marines getting in behind. They're trying to go off the archers. That's what they're really trying to take out. This bodyguard's nearly dead anyway. This is getting forced back. We've got Uruk. Uh, not Uruk. Uh, Orc bow rabble here trying to support them. They're not doing much, having much luck. More galore orcs here about to die as well. Othrod might be about to be sent in. About to see some action. Our Bell Zagar is already in here. He's fighting side by side with the uh, Orcs. There he is. You see him with his armor. Doesn't look too bloodied up yet. I'd imagine they've got to add like a, an actual Haradrim sort of hero as well. He's more of like an Umbarian one, isn't he? More than a uh, than a Harad one. Yeah, the uh, Doom Nakori in here, they're doing a good job. I mean, that means you can bring four Doom Nakori if you bring this guy as your general as well. This is the great thing with all these like heroes. It just kind of like get allowed to find some ways around the unit caps. Just a little bit. Got Uruk Archers down here. They're just, you know, tying down, tying down units. They've got no ammo left. Just using their numbers now. For great effect. And this is good to see the Mummocks are moving back. They're now being moved back inside the city. And it looks like, it, to be fair, it's at the right time as well. To be honest, most of these uh, choke points are on breaking point. Uh, certainly on this flank here, I feel like Gondor could break through at any moment. There are two founding guards now being sent in there. There's another one over here which is nearly dead, luckily for the uh, Orcs. But they're still losing on most of these combats, so they're getting focused down uh, quite hard. Like quite hard. Uh, Haradrim Glaives are really struggling. What else we got here? Serpent Guards. I think he went the wrong way. I think he went through this melee, but he has just about survived. And the Dunakori, look at this, battling in the streets. Those big long swords of theirs. 
They might be heavy in their hands, but they've got to keep swinging them. Keep cutting through these Pelagers. One more swing, boys. I don't know if you're King R. Bel Belzegar. I don't know if he's really a king. He might just be your general, your captain. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking good on that flank there. There's more routing troops. We've now got a, um, we've got a Serpent Guard general. He's now sneaking over. And uh, I think he, the plan was, play, uh, the person who was playing this, uh, this faction was saying, I'm going to sneak around here and get him behind. And he definitely can. There's a gap. You can see there's a gap here that they're going to go through. And they're then going to go round. I mean, there's some archers. They're not going to stop them. This is not looking good. Like, these Uruk bodyguards are dying. Like, everything is dying at the moment, the founding guards. Even the elites can't hold them back. And they've been in for a charge. It certainly did some damage to the Gondorian archers. They stay in prolonged melee though, they might die themselves. Some of the archers are starting to wave up. We've got Boromir in the front lines here. There's Oskilius veterans, see if we can find him. Find the veterans, can't see Boromir, but I don't think he's dead. The Oscar veterans are cool. I can't lie. Are there? Is that even? No, that's not Boromir. He's got a very unique looking shield. I can't see him. They're battling on in here. Oh, another general come forward, Imre Hill. He's scaring off the uh, Serpent Guard general. I think, yeah, he's got out of there. He came back the way he, he went in. Founding Guard are starting to die here. They keep focusing on Imre Hill's also being shot at. It looks like the uh, Dune Corps here are starting to turn this fight around a little bit, beating those archers on the flanks. And it's not looking good here, but the Mummocks are arriving. Look at this. They were on the brink of breaking through, I think, Gondor here. And the Mummocks have arrived. They're going to start tossing their heads around and start sending those troops flying. And they're just going to help save Othrod. He was maybe thinking about falling on his own sword. Not today. Not today. The fire is coming. I think they're trying to scare off the, uh, the Mummocks. I think you just better just using normal ammo. Uh, the Mummock kills do die pretty quickly to archers. Unless they've kind of buffed them in this most recent update. But in previous ones they've died so quickly to archers artillery's still missing every shot oh that's a better one though there from the pot I hit those pole arms we've got Denethor now arriving he's like alright you scoundrels can't seem to get it done yourself so I better go in he's going to eat chomp on some tomatoes when he goes in Alberts here slowly plug their way forward. And look at that, they've finally broken through the side. Boromir must have fallen. And now we've got the cab going in over here. The Serpent Guards, they sure to easily destroy these, these uh, archers. You see, oh, they pretty much pulled through that, though. They should not have done that. Should not have pulled through, that's for sure. And they're going for the artillery, which is understandable. But yeah, you just got to kill the archers first. You can't, uh, can't pull through like that. Especially when they had another cab unit anyway going for the artillery. It's not like they needed to uh, pull through. There you go, they're wavering. And Gondor is starting to collapse, unfortunately. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's not that the Gondor did much wrong. Um, maybe this Gondor army here could have just brought a cav unit uh, or two, and it might have stopped. It might have stopped uh, the sally out. Uh, yeah, general being lost. I think that's uh, this this cav general down here. He's actually died, I think, from friendly fire more than anything. But it's not going to make a difference to the result as Mordor with uh, what do they have left. Two thousand left. Um, yeah, it was actually it's getting relatively close. Uh, there's definitely, unless the uh, Mummocks came back inside, I don't know if we would have won. Um, but there you go, a Pyrrhic victory for Mordor and uh, its allies, Harad. And then, yeah, I was playing this one, like I said. Uh, it was a, a battle from the stream that we did recently. Uh, so, yeah, I was playing this one. It was a fun one. I had a great time playing with these new units. 134 kills with the Arthrod here, 182 kills with the Uruk bodyguards, 200 kills with one of my Morgul raiders. 137 with another. One of my Morgul Legion got 130 kills. And uh, my Cav getting 508 kills. Very, very nicely done. I was very impressed with that. Then we have uh, Chicken Wolf playing as the other Mordor army. 110 kills with the Orc Warriors here. 149 with the Uruk Throng. 148 kills with the Uruk Bodyguards. 164 kills with the Morgul Raiders. 260 kills with the Morgul Legion. Um, and then we've got 212 kills with the Uruk Archers, 328 kills with this one. Wow. Then we have uh, Bane playing as uh, Bane playing as uh, Harad uh, with Ar uh, Bel Belzegar. I'm still butchering his name. Only a mere 30 kills, but pretty much untouched. 120 kills with the Usurpers here. 177 kills with the Aduna Kori. 194 with another. There's uh, Corsair Archers, 273 kills. Uh, Cav getting 157 on both of them. That is damn impressive. They, they both got the same exact identical amount of kills. Then we have Bulk playing as Harad as well. 247 kills with the Serpent Guard General. 200, uh, nearly 200 kills here with the uh, Corsair Marines. 273 kills with the Serpent Guards. Harajim Horse Archers, 103. And then the Mummocks all getting triple figures. 314, 121, and 828 kills. Very, very nice. I mean, if I keep playing as one of the Gondor armies, he was leading Boromir here. 241 kills with his Pelagir Marines. Uh, Gondor Swords getting 172 kills. He spam these guys out. 157 with another there. Uh, the Founding Guard, 102 kills. 139 kills with the Warriors of Loznark. And then all his uh, Gondor Archers got over 200 kills. 200, 243, 274. Then we have Jack, who unfortunately got sallied on. Had a really rough game. Uh, like, yeah, Gondor Swords, 81 kills. I think it's the best anything there. But yeah, this is he had no cabs, so he was just easy to, uh, to take on and uh, pick off. Um, but then we have Famous Austrian playing as uh, the... Denethor also like Gondor army. 108 kills with his Pelagir Marines. 200 kills with the Gondor sword there. Um, one of his archers getting 214 kills. Uh, and then he's got uh, his Trebuchet 22. Knight Silver Swan. 69 kills there. Then we have uh, Cyrus playing as the final Gondorian army. Imre Hill. Not seeing too much action and breaking, I think, through army losses. But uh, Gondorian swords. 121 kills. 142. 171 with another there. Penetheal and Spears, 122 kills. Citadel Guards, 194 kills. And then Sathelian Rangers, one got 337 kills, but the other ones, yeah, like 89, 39 for elite archers is not so great. But there you go, guys. That is today's Dawnless Day Siege. I hope you did enjoy. I hope you've had a great 2023 and 2024 is just as good, if not better for you guys. And uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that shenanigans. And I'll see you guys in the new year. Bye for now.